Yoyoi Kusama, From Here to Infinity, by Sarah Suzuki, illustrated by Ellen Weinstein. This book is from the MoMA. So this is also a book that I was able to borrow from our art gallery, the Memorial Art Gallery in Rochester, New York. They have a lovely library. Yoyoi Kusama was born in the country of Japan, on the island of Honshu, in a town called Matsumoto City. An old palace made of wood and stone overlooked a moat where swans swam. The streets were lined with little shops and snow-capped mountains rose in the distance, swallowing up the sun as it went down in the evening. Yayoi's family owned nurseries where all kinds of flowers and vegetables grew, and workers tended the plants as they matured from seeds to sprouts to stalks. But Yayoi yearned for a different life, far from the countryside. She dreamed about what lay beyond the mountains and places far from Matsumoto City. She longed to leave home and see the world. Yayoi's mother wanted her to stay home and learn old-fashioned manners, how to dress elegantly, walk demurely, eat politely, and find a proper husband. But Yayoi wanted to be an artist. Every day she went outside with ink and brushes and papers. She drew things she saw and things she imagined. She looked closely at the pebbles that lined the riverbed and at the leaves and the stalks of plants. She drew them as chains of tiny cells that looked like dots. When she was older and studying art in art school, her teachers disapproved of her work and they demanded that Yayoi paint in the traditional, precise Japanese style. She wanted to go where she could live without rules. When she was 28 years old, she packed up her silk kimonos and thousands of drawings and stuffed dollar bills into the toes of her shoes. It was her first airplane trip. There were only four other passengers and the weather was stormy with rain and lightning. The airplane wobbled and dipped as it flew to America. In New York, Yoyoi went to the top of the Empire State Building, the tallest building in a city full of tall buildings. When she looked down, she saw buses and cars and yellow taxis zooming up and down the avenues, and bankers and teachers and artists rushing to work. From up on the 86th floor, they looked like dots. She felt very far from quiet Matsumoto City and her mother's rules. Here, it seemed anything was possible. Yayoi set about turning her drawings of dots into paintings. The dollar bills that she had brought to America quickly ran out, and she spent what little money she had left on paints and canvases. She worked day and night. She painted when she was cold. She painted when she was hungry. She painted when she was lonely. And she turned her dots into sculptures, too, with soft, stuffed tubes that covered sofas and chairs and boats. She was devoted to her dots. For her, they were a way of thinking about the world among the stars, as one dot among millions of others. They were a way of thinking about infinity. Sometimes when she grew frustrated, she visited the Museum of Modern Art. She gazed at paintings by other artists and she thought about why and how they were made. She looked at pictures of dancing girls and swirling night skies, trying to solve them as if they were puzzles. Her paintings seemed so different from those she had seen at MoMA. When she at last was ready to show her work in public, she invited all the friends she had made in New York. When she arrived at the gallery, a crowd was spilling out onto the sidewalk. Her friends lifted her into the air, shouting, Yayoi, you've finally done it! Word about her artwork spread quickly. Her friends told their friends, newspapers wrote about her work, and reporters clamored to interview her about her dots. Now she began to show them in other cities all over the United States and Europe. Her dots were covering the world. They appeared in Venice in thousands of dot-shaped mirrors scattered over a big green lawn, or on a pumpkin on a pier, on dresses and t-shirts, on people walking down the streets, and in mirrored rooms where glowing dots were reflected and reflected again, an infinity of dots. Having visited many countries all over the world, Yayoi returned to Japan. The country had changed since she left, with many different artists challenging the old traditional style 
as Yayoi had been doing all along. She still lives in Japan and she continues to paint her dots every day. This is Infinity Mirrored Room, the souls of millions of light years away from 2013. We actually have a sculpture at the mag that is one of Yayoi Kusama's and nearby we have um, one of the painted one of her painted pumpkins at the Albright Knox in Buffalo. This is the obliteration room from 2002. And this is a picture of the artist. That's Yoyoi Kusama by Sarah Suzuki.